Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we are taking a look at a set of AI benchmarks from UL, the company that also produced 3D Mark. Let's see how our GPUs performs. Let's go. So, bit of a different video here, since uh, there is no gaming at all for this one. It's all about the AI performance here, because when I heard that UL was releasing an AI-oriented benchmarks, I was interested, given that it's a well-known company that has been producing benchmarks for a long time and that most of the time produce reliable tests. Uh, what's interesting here, compared to the AI benchmarks that I did in my past reviews, is that all the benchmarks here include optimization for each manufacturer and that make it much, much easier to set up and operate because the various setups for the three brands are not exactly easy to install and maintain, and they also require a lot of tinkering around, and it's a huge waste of time, most of the time. <laughs> so here, it's an all-in-one thing, and that's amazing. So, this Procyon, Procyon benchmark suite integrates different tests, such as AI image generation with stable diffusion and stable diffusion Excel, and an AI computer vision test, which allows different inference to be tested. And there is also some other tests for production with tests for video or image editing with Lightroom and Premiere, but that's not what we are looking at today. So for image generation, it's an automated stable diffusion bench with a simple interface. And you choose between 1.5 and Excel. And for each manufacturer, you can pick the optimized path. For AMD, you get DirectML and Onyx. For Intel, OpenVINO and Tensor RT for NVIDIA. The test will then optimize the model before proceeding with the benchmark. It shows which prompt is being used. It's always the same. And then it will generate the image and you can see them appear. And then you get the results once the test is finished, similar to a 3D mark with a score and then some more details. And for the computer vision test, it's more or less the same thing here, except that there is no image generation, but it just shows how the card performs with different inference. And you also get details for each inference to see how they performed. So I did the test on a bunch of graphics card I have here, aside from really old ones like the GTX 10 series. So let's see how it goes. And for Stable Diffusion 1.5 here, as we can see the score given by the benchmark and not much of a surprise here, the 4090 dominates every other card. And we can see that overall the GeForce beats the competition, even if the most powerful AMD cards are doing decently well, since we find the 7900 XTX XT and GRE between the 4060 Ti's and the 4070. Intel cards are at the bottom of the chart here on this test, followed by RDNA2, which are clearly lagging behind here. But that's the scores and formulas made by UL, which is one thing, but we also get the seconds per image result and not image per second, so the lower score is the best here. And yeah, we can see that the score is one thing, but the actual results aren't looking as dramatic for personal use. The 4090 still dominates, but if you only use stable diffusion once in a while, going from 1.1 seconds per image with a 4090 to almost 1.7 with a 4080 is not really going to change your life. And other than RDNA2 cards, which are clearly much slower, most other cards will do well enough for casual use, even if, yeah, it's a win for Nvidia here. Stable Diffusion XL now, it's a heavier load for the GPU and also on VRAM requirements. And once again, score-wise, it's still a huge win for the 4090 compared to all the other cards. Interesting to see the 3090 Ti is in third position here, so it's behaving really well. And overall, the ranking at the top of the chart does not really change all that much. The 7900 XTX, XT and GRE are still more or less between the 4060, 16 gigs and the 4070. But for Stable Diffusion Excel, we can see that the cards with just 8 gig of RAM are struggling quite a bit. And we see that the breaking point here is really close to the 8 gigs mark since the 3080 10 gigs find itself in the same spot as on Stable Diffusion 1.5 and it performs pretty well in this test. But still, we know that AI workloads eat a lot of VRAM, so 10 gigs may be enough for this test, but it may not be enough for a lot of other tasks. As for the 8 gigs card, there is only the A750 that seemed to suffer a little less here in this test, but the 3060 Ti, 4060 Ti 8 gigs, and the 4060 are struggling, just like our DNA2 cards, which are choking completely here. And some cars don't even pass the test and crash, like the RX 7600 and the 6600, as well as the RTX 2060 with its 6 gigs of RAM that is just crashing as well. So yeah, we already knew that, but VRAM matters for AI workload, and some cards which may not make much sense for gaming at their price, like the 4060 Ti 
16 gigs make more sense for this kind of task. And if we look at the seconds per image, it's obviously the same ranking and we see once again that the score increased exponentially with time gained, since the two seconds gained between the 4080 and 4090 is worth about a thousand points, which is a lot. And while in Stable Diffusion 1.5 it took just a few seconds to generate an image, here yeah, it takes much, much longer. And clearly, for professional use, time is money and the 4090 will save you a lot of time. But for more casual use, yeah, you may have to wait a bit longer for a batch of pictures, but I guess around 40-70 performance level is already pretty decent. But some cards will be more annoying to use, 1 minute 30 seconds per image for 3060 Ti, or more than 5 minutes per image for the 6700XT isn't going to be a good experience. And overall, for Stable Diffusion XL, I am pretty impressed by the 3090 Ti. It's doing really well here. So it's not too surprising to see it's keeping a pretty high price on the used market to this day. It's still a beast at this kind of tasks. We now move on to the computer vision benchmarks in FP16. We once again get call for each card and the ranking is clearly different here. The RTX 30 series aren't holding on as good compared to the RTX 40 series. And as we can see, the 3090 Ti at about the same level as the 4070. And as we can already see here, uh, for AMD cards, it's a bit strange as far as performance goes because we can see that the 7900 GRE is doing better than the XT and XTX. And for AMD cards, the results are clearly all over the place. So let's check the performance for each inference and we begin with MobileNet V3 and it's interesting to see that all the RTX 40s are more or less at the same level here, followed by the RTX 30 and 20s and clearly Nvidia dominates this test. We then find the AMD cards and it's true that the ranking is indeed pretty weird since it's not necessarily the biggest card that performs the best. So I am not sure what the issue is here because it's more or less the same with every other test. Our DNA card's performance is all over the place, most of the time. As for Intel here, it's not awesome, but not bad either. And we see the more powerful card being the ones that perform better. So that makes more sense than what we see with AMD ones. So clearly, it's a bit of a note case with AMD cards here. Moving on to the next inference, ResNet 50, and here again, it's a win for Nvidia, and the GeForce seem to be where they should be. For AMD, it's once again less coherent than the other manufacturers, like the 7900XT that's performing much worse than some much weaker cards. It doesn't make sense, but it is what it is here. On the other hand, the Intel cards do better here than in the previous test. And once again, our DNA2 cards are at the bottom of the chart with the 6600 doing really, really badly here. On Inception V4, well, big surprise, the GeForce have the advantage and the ranking is once again pretty similar to the previous test, even if sometimes some cards are doing a bit better than they should be, but there is nothing too shocking here. Uh, the Intel cards are also performing pretty well since they are doing better than the Radeons that one once again behave a bit strangely, it's clearly all over the place once more. And for the Plav V3, there were some changes. It's a clear win here for the RTX card, but we see that our cards are performing pretty decently as well. AMD cards on the other hand are clearly struggling more, and once again, the ranking between the cards is a total mess. For YOLO V3 now, well, the RTX cards are more or less the same as usual, followed by ARC cards, and for AMD, same issues than we saw in the other test. It's a total mess. And the final inference here, we get Will Sagan, S Rogan, I don't know how you say that, and it's totally different. RTX cards still perform the best overall, but the Radeon are finally behaving more or less how we expect them to, with the more powerful cards being the best performers, and the ranking between the cards looks pretty much similar to what we could see on some gaming benchmarks, even if yes. Nvidia is doing much better, but overall here AMD is not doing too bad. But what we can see here is that this test takes much longer to complete, so maybe it's what's making the difference here. The other tests are much quicker, so maybe the AMD cards are not behaving well enough because they don't have the time to. I don't know. So in the end, what to think of all this? Well, so far, as one might expect overall, when working on AI on Windows, NVIDIA hardware and optimization have a clear lead since Lower and GeForce often ends up performing better than their AMD or Intel counterparts. And speaking of ARC, I find that Intel is doing respectably well here, and overall the performance seems more stable than the AMD cards for now. So if you find an A770 16GB at a good price, it can be a pretty decent choice for AI workload. 
I mean, it's one of the cheapest 16 gig cards on the market, and clearly I will pick it over a 7600 XT for AI use and most of professional use actually. And while we are talking about AMD, I'm not too sure what's going on with inference performance here since it's all over the place most of the time. So maybe software is still lacking for those tasks because we saw that for stable diffusion, RDNA 3 was doing really pretty well. So the potential seems here. Even if I will likely never catch up to the 4080 or 4090, which are greater hardware capabilities and software for those workload. And speaking of 4090, it makes sense why they are still very sought after for AI. It's clearly above all the other cards on the market while costing significantly less than some professional cards. So it's not much of a surprise that it's like the only card from this generation that didn't really lose much of its value over time and maybe it will remain as high until the next gen of cards. We will see. And that's it for me. As usual, if the video interested you and you want to support the channel, the YouTube stuff and the coffee page for those that want to support me directly and a big thank you to all the members. And we will see you again very soon for some other videos. Take care of yourself. Bye bye.